Has anyone seen Hubo? He's a humanoid robot, maybe 48 inches tall, maybe 100 pounds, got some motors and some belts and some blinking lights. I swear I saw him earlier today. Hmm. I wonder where he got to. Ah! There he is! I found you, Hubo. I'd like everyone to meet Hubo, the humanoid robot. Hubo, can you please wave to everyone in the crowd? Aren't robots so cool? They come in all shapes and sizes. Some small, like the small cell phone robot, or some really big, like underwater exploration vehicles. Some have wheels, like the Mars rover, or even the small vacuum cleaner that might be vacuuming your house right now. Some have wings that can fly, like unmanned aerial vehicles used by the military, or a small aircraft that's used as a toy. Some are our favorite robots that we know from TV and movies, such as Wally, the very lovable Wally, from, um, and Robbie from Lost in Space. Now, we've seen all these different robots. What can they do? Now, what makes that different than what Hubo can do? Hubo, why are you so special? Can you please show us? Hubo is showing us that he has two arms, two hands, and an upper body that can move side to side. He actually has the arms can move, reach, and extend. He also has hands that he can grab objects and not crush them. Hubo, what else can you do? Hubo is showing us that he has two legs. He can use those legs to walk, run, and even climb stairs. But I think one of the most impressive things Hubo can do is he has the ability to walk backwards. Now you might think, how can the robot do that without falling over or even looking behind his shoulder? The robot actually has special sensors in its feet to be able to sense the ground and understand how it can move and not fall over. I also hear Hubo can do some dancing. Hubo, can you show us your moves? <sighs> Seriously, Hubo, the robot, you're so silly. So when Hubo's not breaking it down on the dance floor, he lives at the Excite Center at Drexel University. It's a place where engineers, researchers, and uh, students can come together and collaborate on really interesting projects, such as robotics, or fashion, or even video game design. I first met Hubo in 2008 at the Hubo Lab at the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. I was sent there for six months to learn how to build and make these robots. Behind me is actually a picture of a 3D model that I generated of this robot. It's basically a roadmap to figure out how to assemble this robot after it's made. So fast forward a few, few years, I graduated Drexel and I got a mechanical engineering degree and after that I was hired full-time by Drexel to make these robots. So this is actually one of the legs I made for the robot um, that we, this is, is on not this robot on a, but another robot we have at Drexel. I think one of the cool things about these robots are they have over 600 parts in them. These are just the mechanical parts, the parts that were made out of aluminum. But there's also motors and belts and pulleys and all these other little pieces that fit together. And let's not forget the bolts. 
But I think the coolest component of this robot is its robotic skin. Now, I have a special surprise for all you today. I have a surprise speaker who's going to come on stage and tell you more about this really cool robotic skin. This is. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chelsea, and I work with smart textiles, such as futuristic robot skins, in a lab that combines science, design, and engineering. However, when I started college, I had no idea I'd be working on projects such as this. I began in fashion design, so of course I assumed I'd be making clothes. But I figured it'd probably be for people, not for robots. So what I've found is when you ask people about their interests, you often get kind of two distinct groups. There's people who are really into things such as art, you know, design, music, dancing. And then you have people who are really into things like math and computers and other sciences. Well, I definitely fall within that first designer group. Um, I actually ended up finding a way that I could do both of these things. In my second year of college, I switched from fashion design into the custom design major at Drexel, which allowed me to take courses in design and the sciences as well. And this enabled me to continue to be a designer while starting to be an engineer as well. So this picture we have here was taken in the Shimaseki Haute Technology Lab, where I've been working for the past year and a half. This is a lab dedicated to the development and research of smart textiles, and we achieve this through using industrial knitting technology. So here you have a pretty typical shirt. I imagine all of you have probably worn something like this at some point in your life. And when a lot of people think of garment production, this is what comes to mind, the sewing machine. However, a lot of times, these garments are actually made on something more like this. This is an industrial knitting machine made by a Japanese company called Shiyamaseki. They're commonly used in garment production, and they can take the cones of yarn that you see up top there and turn it into a sweater in about 30 minutes, give or take. So as you can see, they work pretty fast. Um, anyone who's ever knit by hand know this is certainly faster than speeds you can achieve there. And when your garment comes out, all you really have to do is pull a couple threads and you're good to go. It's ready to wear. So taking this capability, I'd like to show you what we do with it instead. Just like you might for a garment, each piece starts with a computer program uh, with a grid-based a grid coding system, each dot representing an individual knit stitch. We then make simulations that show us things like colors, shapes, patterns. Um, you can even scan in a real yarn, much the same way you would scan a piece of paper into your computer and knit with that yarn virtually. We also can work with hundreds of unusual materials such as Kevlar, spider silk, and electrically conductive threads. So now here's where our process starts to get a little bit different. In some of the pictures that RJ showed you, you could see the Hubo, uh, you could see robots in Hubo wearing plastic shells. And this is common, you know, we see this in TV movies. But in reality, it really doesn't help him out that much. It's only to make him look cool. Um, they kind of hinder him and make it difficult to, for him to move. But what would be preferable is if we could give Hubo some protection that not only, you know, kept the elements out, but actually helped him out in other ways as well. Hey, Hubo, can you show me your arm? So what Hubo is wearing right now is a specially designed form of robot clothing. It's made out of Kevlar yarns, which are cut resistant, so it remains soft and pliable, but it's durable and protective at the same time. As you can see here, it has added pockets of padding for extra protection, and the arrangement of these can be specially uh, designed to fit him and help him move. So as we continue to work on Hubo's clothing, we can add in other elements that will make it even better. Uh, we can add articulated or bendable fabrics. So uh, when he moves his joints, you know, when you, much like when you're wearing a sweater and it bunches at your elbow, we can avoid things like that by making fabrics that fold up neatly into themselves and reduce bulk. 
We can also add electronic components right into the fabric itself. So this is the work of Christy Jost, another student at the Shima lab. And using her research on fabric batteries, we can actually make Hebo's clothing provide power for him. This can help him out in other ways as well by making him more lightweight and agile, removing the need for power, you know, battery packs, power cords, that kind of thing. So overall, working on projects like this, what we found is that when we use a multidisciplinary team, we can come up with some pretty cool stuff. When you attack a problem from many different angles with people from different kinds of backgrounds, you often end up coming up with solutions that are sometimes unexpected, but often even more successful. Thank you. <laughs>